did you fail audit? If you failed audit, it's probably because they asked you some basic questions, questions that are always on the exam, and you just didn't know what to do because you studied something else. If you failed audit, you're probably very weak on assertions. Audit assertions. In particular, completeness assertion versus existence assertion. So when I have a new tutoring student, the first thing I ask them if it's an audit session, tell me what you know about the difference between completeness and existence. And then I just pause and I let them take over. And within five seconds, I know whether they're ready to pass audit or not. Because they need to tell me that completeness is where the client asserts that everything that should have been recorded on the financial statements at year end has been recorded, that the books are complete. That's the client's assertion with completeness. The auditor fears that something should have been recorded in the year under audit and was not. Therefore, the auditor fears that the books are not complete, while the client asserts completeness that everything that should have been recorded has been recorded, the auditor fears the opposite, that something should have been recorded and wasn't. So with completeness, the auditor's concern is understatement, especially with regard to liabilities. So then I'll ask my new student in an audit session, what's the test for unrecorded liabilities? And what the CPA exam is looking for with the test for unrecorded liabilities is that the auditor examines cash payments made by the client in the first few weeks of the subsequent period. So what the client pay in January? How is that test for unrecorded liabilities? Well, it indicates what was owed in the year under audit because most companies take 30 days to pay what they owe. So any cash payment made in the subsequent period, let's say in the first couple of weeks of January, should have been listed as a liability on the year end balance sheet. And if they weren't listed as a liability, then the books are not complete. So that's one way the auditor tests for completeness. See what the client paid in early January, and then look to make sure that that was listed as a liability in December. And if it was not listed as a liability, but it was paid in January, then you might have found an unrecorded liability. So the CPA audit exam will make you understand the difference between completeness and existence. Completeness. The client asserts that everything that should have been recorded has been recorded. The auditor fears with completeness something should have been recorded in the year under audit and was not. Therefore, the books are not complete for the year under audit. With the completeness assertion, the auditor's concern is always understatement, which is big when it comes to liabilities because clients tend to want to understate those liabilities. So now let's look at existence because you're not going to pass audit until you can tell me the difference between completeness and existence. With existence assertion, the client's asserting that everything that was recorded on this year's balance sheet really does exist at year end. For example, if a receivable appears on a balance sheet, the client's asserting that the customer really exists, that the sale really did occur. And that's why sometimes you see the term occurrence alongside existence because they go together, right? If the receivable exists at year end, that means the sale must have occurred during the year. But if the sale didn't occur, then the receivable doesn't exist. So they go together. With existence assertion, the client asserts that everything that was recorded really does exist at year end, like receivables. If they appear on the balance sheet, then the customer really does exist. The sale really did occur. Well, that's what the client's asserting with regard to existence occurrence. But the auditor is concerned that some receivables that appear on the balance sheet are for customers that do not exist. So the auditor's concern here is overstatement. In this case, overstatement of receivables for existence and overstatement of sales for occurrence. So with existence slash occurrence, the auditor's concerned that if the sale never occurred, the customer doesn't exist. And that's an overstatement concern that the auditor has with regard to existence occurrence. Now, how does the auditor test for overstatement of receivables? One way is by sending out confirmations to client customers and ask for a reply simply to make sure that the receivable is actually owed. 
Let's try this question. Which of the following is correct with regard to audit assertions? A. With completeness, the client asserts that everything that was recorded represents a valid transaction. No, no, that sounds like existence. B. With existence, the client asserts that everything that should have been recorded was recorded. No, no, that sounds like completeness. C. Both of these are correct. D. Neither of these are correct. The answer is what? The answer is D. Both of these are wrong. All right, A says, with completeness, the client asserts that everything that was recorded represents a valid transaction. No, that's existence. B says, with existence, the client asserts that everything that should have been recorded was recorded. That's completeness. So it's all backwards here in this question. So the answer is D, neither. Let's try this question. Which of the following is correct with regard to completeness and existence? A says, with completeness, the client asserts that everything that should have been recorded has been recorded. The auditor is concerned with overstatement. Not quite. Let's read it again. With completeness, the client asserts that everything that should have been recorded has been recorded. Okay, that part's right about completeness. But then it says the auditor is concerned with overstatement. No, not with completeness. With completeness, the auditor is concerned with understatement. That something that should have been recorded wasn't. How about B? With existence, the client asserts that everything that has been recorded should have been recorded. The auditor is concerned with overstatement. Yes, that looks good. I like B. C says both. No, because A is wrong. D says neither. No, because B is right. So B is the answer. Let's try this. Assertions about which of the following relate to whether all assets, liabilities, and equity interests that should be recorded in the financial statements are so included. Okay, is that existence where the client asserts that all assets, liabilities, and equity interests that should be recorded in the financial statements are so included? Is that what existence is asserting? No. No, that's completeness, isn't it? Completeness, when someone asserts completeness, they're saying that all assets, liabilities, and equity interests that should be recorded in the financial statements are included. That's completeness. Let's go with B, two only. Now, in the next audit video, so in this video, we said if you failed audit, it's probably because you don't know the difference between completeness and existence occurrence. Now, there's other assertions you have to know, too. And in the next audit video, we're going to go over the difference between existence and valuation. Existence assertion versus valuation assertion. So we just played the existence versus completeness game. Now we're going to play existence versus valuation. That'll be in the next audit video. Is passing the CPA exam harder than doing a backflip? Well, the answer is, it's all about preparation. Hi, I'm Darius Clark, and here at I-75 CPA Review, I'm going to put you on the right road. So when you go to take FAR, Audit, BEC, and Reg, you're going to have so much confidence, you're going to be like this guy, doing a backflip. So go to cpaexamtutoring.com and take I-75 to your next pass. Because the only thing more painful than failing the CPA exam is failing a backflip. So for just $109 a month, become a monthly subscriber to I-75 CPA Review and get all four parts for the same subscription.